uh, is it the deputy, uh, the person who's responsible for the deputy, the deputy imposer of discipline of the police, I'm not sure what his precise position is, Mr. Vahil, who makes the comment that he believes that a small minority of the people of Denver do not trust the police department to discipline itself. This is, this is lies this brazen, trumpeted through the Denver Post to people too credulous and too ignorant to know better can only take you so far. I'm telling you that there is an, out, there is an outrage, a criminal outrage underway, federal felonies under the Civil Rights of 1964. I do not expect the U.S. Attorney here, who's too busy closing in cannabis dispensaries, to pay any attention to this. But I just want to let you know that Mr. Quinones, I, okay, let, me, let me deal with the specific situation that I observed a week ago. I had a science effect. Oh, week ago. That, this is a criminal, this is a, a direct, a, I witnessed what I believe to be criminalized on the part of the police department. I, I do not spend much time down at Occupy. I walked down there. I spoke to several protesters there, including Karen Sotero, who's a frequent protester. They were holding up provocative signs. They did venture into the bus lane. Uh, as they did so, a police, a police SUV from District 6, uh, I, the officers were not wearing identification, came in their direction and deliberately accelerated towards them, nearly striking them and forcing them to move out of the street in order to save their skins. The window rolled down, the driver, a man with a mustache, who I recognized, but he was not wearing identification, I've not succeeded in identifying him yet, but I hope to, uh, said, you need to stay out of the, to stay out of the street. I said, you need to stop using your vehicle as, you. as a weapon. Sir, so that someone else can, can speak. Yes. Okay. You know, okay, that's, that's a that's, <laughs> My name is Buzzy Gibson, and I don't have anything quite so dramatic. In fact, I've lived here a long time, but I grew up on the south side of Chicago, so I want to say, eh, you know. But anyway, but I just have a couple of comments. One, I have a little bit of trouble with the acronyms, just because I think you, you know what they mean. But, oh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty adept at that stuff, but I was trying to have um, I, um, What is your standard? Is there a standard you're looking for? You know, when you say, oh, like, uh, we only had, I'm just making this up, but 3,000 complaints this year. Are you trying to get down to 2,000? Are you trying to get down to 100? Oh, no. Are you trying to get no deaths? What are you, what are you trying Is there something you're trying to achieve? I'm serious. No, I'm not trying to be, no, no, no. I'm not trying to make fun of you. Yeah, what, what the, the monitor's office, what we do is we merely monitor and see what is going on in regards to statistics. Please. And so what we do is we report what we observe, what we see, and then we report that out. And we I also just, make recommendations. So I, I'm not with, I don't, I'm not with the police department. I'm not with the sheriff's department. The independent monitor's office is independent of those agencies. So what we know, do yeah. is we, yeah. So there, there's not, there's not a standard. If there is a standard people are trying to get to, you know. Like, but no. the other thing is, is it is a, it is, it's, it's a comment. I just. But it seems to me there's, there's getting to be an awful lot of layers. And when you get an awful lot of layers, it becomes top-heavy to do anything in what is referred to as a closed institution. You know, the police department, in a way, is a closed institution. So, you know I mean? And, and I, I don't mean that in a negative way. But when you get all these layers, you just have a, had a, new, you know, a new deputy manager for police discipline. As somebody said, I didn't go to public school, but one of my pals did who said, Oh, they got their own vice principal. You know what I mean? And that's not you. You guys didn't appoint him. But it's, it's like, what? What's, what are they trying to achieve there? It's like the more, you know, there's an edge. The more you try to change something, the more it remains the same. An awful lot of energy is going into changing something. So I just think, especially now, like they're doing that budget committee tonight, if you want the people to be Bruce and do something about Tabor, which I, I'm very much in favor of for you guys, You've got to tighten up. You can't just be hiring consultants and adding new people. And that's not your fault. I just that's my comment. Before you yeah. leave, ma'am, before you leave, board member. Yeah, Buzzy. Full disclosure: a hundred years ago, I hired this woman. She did. Because I still think I can yell at her occasionally. Um, <laughs> no, I was never going to Um We do have. There are all sorts of standards. The standards of our office. Doesn't, we don't want fewer complaints. We want to hear everybody who has a complaint complain. We deal with things like the amount, 
Standards are the amount of time it takes to deal with the complaints, how the complaints are responded to, what the satisfaction level is to people who go through mediation. There are a number of things, so we do have specific standards. We don't look for more or less complaints. We want more and better service. And if complaints are a way to get to better service, then we welcome, we welcome them. I want to make that clear. Uh, the other part, we agree that too many pieces make a very inefficient machine, but we haven't added any new pieces. Uh, the new chief and the new manager, I think, are trying to consolidate to have fewer and more coordinated and effectual pieces. So we're all working together on that, but it's a very new brew we're stirring. Kathy, do you think they're trying to get rid of you guys? I think so, but we're not going to let them do it. Oh, okay. Because you're $600,000 in the budget. That's all. I, I'm not trying to get rid of you. I just wondered if maybe, you know, the independent monitor is 600000 which is a, uh, which, just, uh, not, no, no, I don't. Not you guys. Have one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I just, I just know that it's, it just looks like it. If I would just some. It's four and a half FT. Okay. And we are all volunteers. <coughs> My name is Kelsey Ann and Kelsey Ann Haglund, and um, let's see here. I don't know if I, I don't have a question, but there's um, a principle that started um, a government was originally set up to be transparent. Transparency was used to create accountability. Um, and I'm not sure what happens that now our government, our police departments have become quite <coughs> opposite of transparent. They are shrouded in secrecy and the individual citizen is now demanded to be transparent. Our phones are tapped, we have halo cameras over our parks. Um, when we stand in a park and record a violation with our cell phones, our cell phones are stolen and our footage is destroyed. <coughs> our independent reporters are beaten from behind when their press passes are quite visible. So transparency for government, privacy for individuals, there has been a major switch that is really disturbing. There's also the matter of escalation. If I'm standing on a sidewalk with a paperboard sign and an individual walks up covered in a black helmet with a black riot shield, black shin guards, and he looks like military marine, who is escalating the situation at that time? I deeply appreciate your commitment to what you are trying to do, but right now, all of us are standing on the same ship, and we are trying to sail where we have to go, but we are standing in mutiny on this ship, and the only way that we will get to where we have to go is in unity. Thank you for working with us. But all of you, we are here together creating something new. An organization, a PTA, a city government, a company, a neighborhood is only as good as the participants working together, creating unity. Thank you for trying to create something new. But you guys aren't listening to us. If you've been on the board for five, six, seven years, uh, six months, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then things are not changing, especially if people are being attacked at night by marine outfitted police officers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me um, sure. clarify. Board members are appointed at, at, at different uh, times. I've been on the board um, for three years. Uh, Nita has been on the board since last uh, July. Um, Carmen uh, came on the board two and a half years 
to go. And so we have um, different years of service. And I just wanted to make that clear for the record. Yes, I'm the least of black. I am the grandfather of Michael DeHera, who's Denver police beat savagely, and there was no charges filed. The policeman stole his phone, committed assault, and didn't get a damn thing about it. It was two years to the date before he was given any kind of, any kind of, he suffered any consequences. He, he was never, he was never questioned. <coughs> sure, the police department come there and they said, oh yes, we're giving him two, three days off and this and that. When we went to district court, he had not been charged any time. Now what the hell kind of punishment is that? You know, the Denver Police Department, they, he never suffered one thing. Sure, he got fired, and that dirty bastard, he doesn't deserve to be on the street. He shouldn't be, even be in Afghanistan. And him and Mer, if, if they had gotten Mer what he had done before, he wouldn't have been on the fort, and it wouldn't have cost the city of Denver millions of dollars. Okay? And if you were the, and if you were the, if you were the captain uh, of District 1, when Michael B. Her got beat, you shouldn't be a captain today. They should use the, right. the, 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 right. the judgment strike from the top, and they should have scaled down. Because there should have been a lot of repercussions there. There should have been at least 10 persons that have, should have been demoted. And another thing I want to bring up tonight is, I'm sorry, Kathy, I've, I've talked to her before she knows how I feel. I, I'm wholeheartedly, I wore this shirt not because I hate policemen. I was brought up in a small country, a town, Trinidad, Colorado. I was taught to respect the law, and I obeyed it. And today, I still obey it. I'm sorry I'm looking at you, but I... I I I put point at you, but you, but Chief White, I feel sorry for you, sir. What you ought to do is, what you ought to do is, you ought to accept the the FBI coming in and doing an investigation. We need it. You know, we got, you know, if you were a farmer and you had a chicken house, would you hire a fox to go farm? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what the hell the Denver Police Department is doing. I'm uh, chief, I've uh, been the staff of the union. I've been a dedicated union man for all my life. And I believe strongly in the union, but the police union is, you know, when they let their officers lie, commit insult, and, and, and steal the cell phone, Conspiracy. You know, what is it? There's no lie. You guys say, well, we got the Matrix. What the hell good is a Matrix? They can't, you fire them for stealing, you fire them for lying, and what do they do? They take six months vacation. Then, get the job yeah, they yeah. come back in six months, they go on the street. What the hell kind of discipline is that? The only one that you know, lost his job I, I've had four jobs in my life. I'm 70 years old. And if I hadn't been able to work, I had four jobs. Three of them I quit because for more money. And the last one I had, I had for 28 years. And and I tell you what, I wouldn't have been able to keep that job had I been acting like a devil policeman. And like I say, I've got friends in the devil police. I respect them. But there's the two bastards I don't like is Mur and Sparks. They should be criminally charged. Prosecuted. You know, they should be more than that. I was just thanking you for your time. Thank you. I'm sorry I was so... My name's Corey, and I feel a little underprepared. I didn't know we were going to bring guns to this damn dance. I mean, as a Citizens Oversight Board, you should let us know next time. We all have them, just to make it even. You know, just a thought. They get carrying, we can. But, um... On the night of March 12th, around 9.30 in the evening, in the southeast corner of Civic Center Park, I was sitting and talking with my friends when Sergeant Perry Spielman stopped his cruiser number 8406 at an intersection of 14th and Broadway, at which point Mr. Spielman, or Sergeant Spielman, began to shine his spotlight on the people I was sitting with and myself. Sergeant Spielman proceeded to keep the spotlights on us,
for roughly three minutes as the stoplight went through three, at least three cycles of its rotation. I then approached Sergeant Spielman in full view of the spotlight with my cell phone camera, recording the entire event. I asked Sergeant Spielman, is there a problem? Because I'm trying to keep the park safe and free of crime. Oh, and can I please have your business card? When I asked Sergeant Spielman for his business card, he replied, fuck you, and drove off and threw the green right. I followed Sergeant Spielman across the intersection east on 14th. I continued re to record at a safe and legal spot on the grass embankment between the sidewalk and the street. As Sergeant Spielman was traveling at a low rate of speed, I informed him that he was in violation of the law by not providing his identification, a common tactic of the police department. But that's okay, because I have the cruiser number, so I can figure out who he is. At this point, Sergeant Spielman reached out of his cruiser and stole my still recording cell phone. At the point Sergeant Spielman stole my cell phone, he is in violation of CRS 18-4-3011. Sergeant Spielman then rolled up his window and sped to a stoplight at 14th and Lincoln, where he stopped. When I approached the cruiser, stopped at 14th and Lincoln, I began knocking on the window of Sergeant Spielman's cruiser, demanding my property back. Sergeant Spielman began mocking me and videotaping with his red cell phone. I repeated, you stole my cell phone and I want it back. Sergeant Spielman then rolled down his window and deployed OC spray, placing him in violations of CRS 18-4-302, A, B, C, and D. This blinded me for about three minutes. I began to walk back towards Civic Center Park. It's an uh, aggravated robbery officer. So you know the law. This blinded me for about three minutes, and I began to walk back towards Civic Center Park. At this point, many more officers showed up, and I was tackled from behind by an unknown officer, possibly Sergeant Spielman, as I do not know, as I was not facing the officer, and I was blinded by the OC spray. I was then placed in handcuffs face down with the officer's knee on my spine between my neck and my head, right there, causing excruciating pain. Uh, <coughs> James Stacy was recording the incident, and some of the officers in the park told him to move back. I screamed out to James Stacy to move back but do not leave the park because I feared for my life, placing every officer involved in violation of 18-3-2061. That's menacing. Uh, Mr. Stacy continued to videotape me the incident. Screaming out for documentation was what of what was going on caused the officer on top of me and moved down to my handcuffed hands and attempt to break my fingers in violation of CRS 18-3-2061. The, on tops, the officer on top of me was unable to break my fingers because I was able to struggle and get my middle finger free of its grip and ball in the hand into a tight fist. At this point, I could painfully open my eyes for about 30 seconds. I continued to shout that Sergeant Spielman stole my cell phone, at which point Sergeant Spielman said I should not have been recording him. I then witnessed the officers place James Stacy under arrest for interference after he complied with the officer's orders and moved back. I then saw the officers take Mr. Stacy's phones, which he was recording the incident with. Through the pain of the OC spray, I, read, I witnessed the police remove the SIM card from Mr. Stacy's phone and discard it. After this, I was moved to District 6 substation in violation of CRS 18-3-3032A and B, which is uh, false imprisonment. But let's talk about Sergeant Spielman, because this is a wonderful man. There are mellow cops and in-your-face cops, and then there are cops like Sergeant Harry Spielman, the subject of at least 18 internal affairs investigations dating wow. back to the 1990s. Many trigger complaints of allegations of, what do we know, unnecessary force and discourtesy. <laughs> Precisely how many complaints Spielman has generated is unknown, but we do know that, as tra that at a traffic stop of Ashford, Ward Wardham, and Cornelius County, two African American males who were on their way to Lodo one Friday night in February two, 2009, Warham and Campbell said they were pulled over by Sergeant Spielman and two other officers for no reason, ordered out of their car at gunpoint, like I said, next time let us know, gentlemen, if we're going to have this at the schools, then searched, handcuffed, and subject to racial slurs. After a check with dispatch turned up no outstanding warrants, Wardham, the driver, was issued a ticket for allegedly failing to wear a seatbelt and other minor violations. Denver County Court Judge Aline Ortiz White saw this matter as extreme, profane, and racially motivated. Yeah. And Wardham and Campbell were unlawfully detained for unreasonable time without reasonable suspicion. Also, back in 2004, Spielman was also involved in another racial plate profile complaint by an African American male. The DPD had to give up the files concerning the officers involved, including Spielman, who had a history of internal, complaints, uh, internal affairs complaints at which point was tallying at 17. Spielman was one of the defendants in a subsequent civil rights lawsuit, which the city settled for $75,000. Earlier this year, 
the Denver City Council paid another $24,000 under over similar allegations involving Perry Spielman. So the formula for the Denver Police Department is to allow a racist not only to remain on the force after costing the people of Denver $100,000, but to promote them. The DPD places a new chief, that's you, that promises to change things that we have racist terrorists like Sergeant Spielman still inflicting untold amount of pain on the people of Denver. I see no change. I just see DPD placing blackface on their racism and terrorism. I have a suggestion. If you want the trust of the people, if you want to clean up the Denver Police Department, start by getting rid of Perry Spielman. And after all this, I would like my phone back because the SIM card had the last picture I ever took of my mom alive. And that's very important to me. Because I don't have any faith on this board, or you, or you, or you. I have filed a criminal complaint with the district attorney's office against Sergeant Spielman, right here. And in Colorado, just so everyone knows, uh, Colorado is not a state where you can file a direct civilian criminal complaint. You can do that in Montana and Pennsylvania. But in Denver, you have Economic Crime Unit of the Denver District Attorney's Office, Economic Crime Complaint Form, and as my camera was stolen. Uh, so you can fill that out. Still the same thing. They have three days to respond. So as I have no trust in you guys, I filed that on behalf of myself. Um, it'll be interesting once again after this to see how the law protects this racist terrorist as it has done 19 times before. And people owe terrorism. Let's get to the US def UN definition of terrorism. Excuse me, sir. This is a, I'm sorry, this is a public a, forum. A, a yeah, I have a lot of people behind you. Do you guys mind? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I can't hear about it. Okay, they're no not, worries. They're, they're not in charge of this meeting. Uh, this so is a public forum, so I'll, yeah, don't worry. No. Criminal acts intended or calculated to provoke a state of terror in the general public. No, that's okay. No, no one yeah, 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 actually, I'm going to be that person. There's, look at the yeah. people. I think yeah. we've got 30 minutes. You can submit yeah. that testimony to the record. I, I, I still feel that at a public forum, I should not be denied my First Amendment right to address my grievances. Yeah, but I'm redressing my grievances. I'm sorry, I'm not going to quit. This, I'm redressing my grievances. You know, you, you complain about how the police treat you, but look how you treat others. I have a pepper spray. You are being given Okay, I'm continuing. Give it respect. You got beat up. Okay. They can wait. He's not really no, I'm not leaving. This is the public forum. I have my First Amendment right to do this. I'm going to do this. Right the UN definition of what you want us to have leave will make that happen. Yeah. Make, with your I guns. Want to make that happen. Oh, see, the UN definition of terrorism. You have another felony. I'm just saying that, like, with all the respect other things. I know. But I don't get my complaint out. This is three times a year. Yeah, you've got the whole thing you can argue. You I could have been done. Yeah. The UN definition of terrorism is criminal acts intended or calculated to provoke a state of terror in the general public. A group of persons or a particular persons for political purposes are include are in any circumstances unjustifiable, whatever the consideration of political, philosophical, ideological, racial, <coughs> ethnic, religious, or other nature that may be invoked to justify them. I have witnessed countless times during protests officers specifically target women's in the hope of provoking provoking a reaction from the crowd. I've witnessed that officers block people recording police arrests and incidences. I have seen officers secure handcuffs so tight on people that caused nerve damage in the hands as they did with political prisoner Karen Sidoro. I've seen police constantly intimidate and terrorize peaceful protesters. I've seen the police in full riot gear run down and tackle people from behind as they are fleeing from them. I've seen the police repeatedly and without provocation use less than lethal rounds and weapons on people. I've seen the police attack and destroy people's belongings and terrorize and arrest them when they try to prevent this theft. These are not actions of the police force. These are actions of a terrorist organization no different than the brutal terrorist organizations and dictatorships. The Denver Police Department has re repeatedly provoked the state of terror in the general public and groups of people based on their political beliefs, race, ethnicity, and sex. This problem is much bigger than the Citizens Oversight Board and the Denver Police are violating people's civil and human rights and this must stop now. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shalise Thomas, and I'm part of Occupy Denver. And um, on quite a few occasions, I've witnessed people being attacked and, and from right officers myself. And I was wondering, um, is there a public document of the orders that were given to the officers that made it okay for them to attack people? And how come the footage from the Halo cameras haven't been used to? Um, pursue any of the losses that have been placed against the police force. I think we'd have to ask the officers to respond to that. They were torn out anyway, so no sense in that. Well, disappeared. 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 Disappeared.
Has there been a complaint formally filed? With, I'm just asking. I don't know. Yeah, if there's been a, a complaint formally filed, it would be investigated. David Lane was our lawyer. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. David Lane was our lawyer. We lost the lawsuit. That, that was a request for an injunction. Yeah, but, but I, was I mean, the, to know the, question, the, question, the, the question you're asking is a good question. Okay. The, the question is has there been an investigation? utilizing that as evidence, and I have no idea. But I made a note of it because we're going to ask. If there hasn't been a formal complaint filed with the Office of the Independent Monitor, then that ought to be done so that the gathering of evidence can take place. All of the things that you all say may all 100% be right, but unless it's investigated and unless there is an opportunity to find out about it, we, as the oversight board, or even the monitor, can't just say, "Yeah, there were there were uh, um, there were uh, instructions issued to the officers. Yes, there is a halo camera. Yes, we don't know. So you need to do that. That's all." So how would I go about doing that? You, you can you With talk Michelle? to Michelle, okay. and Michelle will help you. She'll help you okay. file that complaint. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ty. A year ago, um, I was harassed. I was going to eat at a restaurant in District One, and on the on the way there, I was pulled over. Pretty sure I was profiled because I had a sticker. I'm a, a MMJ patient here in Denver, and so he pulled me over, asked for all my stuff, went back to his car, sat there for a minute, and then came back and said, "Your car smells like marijuana," which I know that is not true. So I, he asked me to get out of the car. I stepped out of the car. He completely tore my car in two. Uh, they, they arrested me and never read me my rights. Um, I, was, I have fibromyalgia. He pulled the handcuffs so tight on me that I couldn't like, put my arms forward. So Tommy got to the police station. He, uh, put, they put me in there and they took my handcuffs off. I'd been in the handcuffs for over two hours in the back of a squad car. So I never knew really why I was being arrested. And then, so he found, I guess he found a bottle of hash, so maybe I should pay attention to some of the laws because hash is a product of cannabis. Actually, some of us have to smoke that just because it's stronger than normal cannabis. So he, uh, I, he took the handcuffs off and I couldn't move my arm up because it had been pulled back for so long. And he yanked it up so far in the air that I started crying. They took me into the room, they handcuffed me to the wall. They wouldn't let me pee. So uh, I was in there for like two hours. Then they came back and they cut all my necklace off, my shoes. They took my belt like I was like some kind of criminal. They took me and then they came back in there and says, oh, we don't have enough evidence to hold you for the weekend, so we're going to let you go. So now it's like 4 o'clock in the morning in the middle of nowhere. And so I had to get a ride home. They made my partner walk home alone. You know, like, come on, man. Like, really, do I look like a criminal? I mean, they took my car, you know, they impounded it for $3,000. If it wasn't for Lieutenant Payson, I would have never got my money back. I went to court, they dismissed all my charges, found me not guilty, and if it wasn't for him being a kind officer that he is, I would have never got my money back. They tore my card. I mean, like, come on, you don't have to be horrific like that. I don't, I'm not a criminal, so you don't treat people like that, but thanks to him. And thanks for him. He needs to go to maybe District 6 because he's that person. <laughs> maybe he should be in that spot. I want to thank members of the commission as well as the community and everybody for being here. My name is Julie Gonzalez. Um, I actually want to raise a couple of questions that I didn't hear addressed in the report to flag those for, for potential further inquiry. And that relates to the Denver Police Department's participation in the Secure Communities Program. Why is, I, well, I guess one question is, is that being looked at as part of this review process and this oversight process? Secure, secure communities 
So secure communities. Uh, I'm sorry. Sure. So I'm sorry. I know uh, being a commander here in North Denver, secure communities is a topic that comes up quite often, and rightfully so. There's a lot of concern uh, from the community in North Denver about, uh, and we have concern as well as a department about true crime victims <coughs> being afraid to call the police when they're victimized because they're afraid they're going to get deported. Right. So. We do and have participated, uh, I'm not sure if we currently are, I honestly don't know, uh, in secure communities. Not, the police department does nothing <coughs> different in secure communities. What happens is when the sheriff's department, which is all part of the city, obviously, uh, books someone into the county jail, they run their prints through that computer database. So um, there's a lot of issues that are being looked at with secure communities. I think that um, uh, the police department's participation in that is basically nothing more than doing exactly what we do already. When we do arrest individuals, we do take them to the jail, the county jail, and then they are processed through that. So it's not, but I do understand, as the, as the commander here, something we struggle with constantly is overcoming the fear um, of, of normal people that have no business being deported, really, right? So, but they're afraid, and they are afraid to come forward when they're truly victims of crime. And that's something that's really concerning. <coughs> we try desperately to work with, with our community partners, like NITA and like our city council folks, people that these folks trust to come forward. Unfortunately, with that, there's a time delay. Uh, sometimes they get lost in the shelf. I'm talking about crime victims. Mm -hmm. So we understand our issues. There are issues that we're working with uh, as part of the community that we serve uh, to try to address, because I think that's one of the biggest strategies of the whole thing, is we lose those crime victims who are afraid. At what point, so then, understanding and recognizing that those concerns exist, and looking at the last data um, nationally that places, and then specifically here, nationally that places over two-thirds of the individuals flagged for deportation under the Secure Communities Program as being low-level municipal offenses, and then looking exactly how that number is mirrored here in Denver with only 27% of um, people convicted or arrested for, I'm sorry, arrested for crimes being um, serious offenses. At what point is Denver Police Department going to end that participation in that program, um, given these damning statistics? I, I'm sorry, as, uh, as uh, Commander had done Actually, as you well know, that's the state. That was a decision that was made by the governor that the state would participate in that. I, I think the mayor, and actually I've attended a meeting here, the mayor has attended a meeting here, and as uh, Commander Stevens stated, there are, we have some concerns as it relates to that, and we're looking at how can we do that differently, but also making sure that we treat every everyone fair. And what happens, as you well know, is uh, people, uh, individuals get into the, as a result of violating a law, uh, and if in fact they get detained, they get they go down to the jail and they get fingerprinted. And once they get fingerprinted, if in fact it's determined uh, that they're in a the status where they should not be here, that's when it be, becomes an issue. But just to be mindful, was a law was violated, so I don't want to. Also, don't, I, I, uh, no, a law has been alleged to have been violated, okay. and, that, and, and okay. given that secure communities flags at point of arrest as opposed to point of conviction, it raises even further concerns. I think, and and, and so I appreciate that there are. Um, address or that, there, that our addresses are, are our concerns are being addressed one question that I would like to raise for you all is in regards to um, questioning cost of holding individuals <coughs> on the secure communities detainers for um, count for the for the jail um, because uh, that cost is not being reimbursed by ice um, and uh, if, if there are these concerns around victims not coming forward, around witnesses not coming forward, everybody else here can talk to you for days around the concerns with racial profiling that currently exists, right? That hopefully this body is attempting to address. I would add into that the fiscal concerns, um, and I would like to ask that, I'm not sure which of this body is the correct person to be asking Mayor Hancock and Governor Hickenlooper directly to withdraw Colorado's participation from this program, but I would ask that collectively you all do so. Thank you.